from WFSB, this is Sports Sunday. Now, here's Elliot Polakoff. Welcome to Sports Sunday. I'm Elliot Polakoff. We've got a lot to get to tonight. The Hartford Athletic are looking for a new head coach. The Wolfpack continue to stay red hot. But we're going to start things off with the undefeated New England Patriots taking on a very confident Cleveland Browns team this afternoon. Prior to this game, Browns wide receiver Jarvis Landry said, quote, we're going to win. It's just that simple. We're going to win, end quote. Jarvis, word of advice. Given the Pats bulletin board material, not a great move. This Pats team is 7-0 for a reason. Bill Belichick trying to win his 300th game as a head coach and getting a little help early on from, you guessed it, his defense. Donta Hightower recovering the fumble, taking it 26 yards the other way. At this point, you're surprised that the Pats team doesn't score in a game 10-0 New England. Late first quarter after the Patriots forced another turnover, Tom Brady and Julian Edelman hooking up for the eight-yard score, 17-0 Pats. But give Cleveland a little credit. They battled back to make it a one-score game, but the Browns had no answer for Brady and Edelman. Again, the dynamic duo connects 24-10 Patriots. Fast forward to midway through the fourth quarter. Browns down 17. They need points fast. Fourth and 16, and... This ain't going to get you any points, Cleveland. The Patriots defense just too strong in this one. New England moves to 8-0 with a 27-13 win. Belichick wins his 300th game, but of course, you wouldn't know it from his comments post-game. It's good to beat Cleveland. It's good to beat anybody. It's a tough league to win in, so... Um, I'm proud of what the guys did. Switching gears to hockey, the Boston Bruins are picking up right where they left off last season, winning seven of their first ten games. The New York Rangers also picking up where they left off. They've got the third fewest points in the NHL. But New York coming off a win their last time out, and they always seem to play a little bit better at the Garden. Raiders up one to nothing in the second period, but here comes Boston. David Pasternak skating in from the wing, crashes into Henrik Lundqvist. Pat Patrice Bergeron cleans things up for the goal, 1-1 game. And that really opened up the floodgates. Brad Marchand making it 2-1 Bruins less than a minute later, and the Bruins literally beginning to skate circles around the Rangers the rest of the way. They score seven times, and they win it easily 7-4. Meanwhile, for as bad as the Rangers have been, the Hartford Wolfpack have been that good. They just finished off a sweep of Nutmeg State rival Bridgeport over the weekend, beating the South Tigers 2-1 to this afternoon in overtime. They now head up to Canada for a three-game road trip this upcoming week. It was a tough opening year for the Hartford Athletic. They finished with the third worst record in the USL, and their only winning streak in league play came when they won their final two games of the season. A day after losing a friendly match against Jamaican side Portmore United, the team announced a change in leadership. Head coach Jimmy Nielsen and The Athletic have agreed to mutually part ways. But Athletic chairman and CEO Bruce Mandel said in a statement, quote, We would like to thank Jimmy for his contributions to our organization and all his efforts in launching our club in its inaugural season, end quote. The team says it will begin an immediate international search for a replacement. Still a lot more to come on this edition of Sports Sunday. Some big time performances from week seven of FNF. Who's making a push towards the postseason in the Nutmeg State? We'll take a look right after the break. Athlete of the Week is punctured by UConn Health Orthopedics and Sports Medicine. All right, time for our Athlete of the Week nominees for Week 7. First up, Newington quarterback Nick Pestricello just mentioned his name a little earlier. He did a little bit of everything in the Indians' win over Maloney. Passed for two scores, ran for over 130 yards, and four scores. Big-time performance by the junior. Our next nominee, killingly running back Jack Sharp. And to say he went off was an understatement. 23 carries, 386 yards, and five touchdowns in Killingly's 49-7 win over Brookfield. Also putting together a five-touchdown performance on the ground was our next nominee, John Orsoni of Weathersfield. He had three rushing touchdowns just in the first quarter as Weathersfield shut out Bristol Eastern 47 to nothing. And last but not least, got to give it up for Southington quarterback Brady Lafferty. He didn't even start against East Hartford, but came into the game in the second quarter, fired five touchdown passes for the Knights, who won big 41-7. Voting for our four Athlete of the Week nominees is now open online at WFSB.com and on the Channel 3 Sports app. Our big three-on-three -three game of the week poll is also out tonight. This week, the nominees are Daniel Hand at West Haven, Cheshire at East Haven, or Xavier at Notre Dame West Haven. And again, voting for both polls open right now. You can cast your vote by using the Channel 3 Sports app, or you can go to WFSB.com. And Joe Zone will be live for the winning game starting Friday night at 5. And as we get closer and closer to the postseason, remember to keep it right here on Channel 3 for all of your highlights and game day coverage only on Friday Night Football, Fridays at 11.15 on Channel 3. 
It finally happened, folks. The Yukon Huskies two plus year FBS and road losing streaks came to an end over the weekend as Yukon beat former Yankee Conference rival UMass 56 to 35. The Huskies ran it right down the Minutemen's throat, and that meant a huge day for junior running back Kevin Mensa. He finished with 164 yards and a career high five touchdowns. UConn never trailed in this one, but the Huskies don't have much time to celebrate. They are back at Rensselaer this Friday for a matchup against 6 and 1 Navy. Meanwhile, hard to believe that the UConn men's basketball team will play its exhibition game in just a couple of days. The Huskies hosting St. Michael's College, that's a Division II school out of Vermont. Their first regular season game, not until the following Friday, November 8th, in a Nutmeg State showdown against Sacred Heart. Dan Hurley's squad definitely has some higher expectations this year, and he's excited to see how this mixture of talented youngsters and accomplished veterans comes together. Listen, this is Al Tariq and Christian's team. Uh, you know, to show the staff and to show their teammates that they can lead the way, um, you know, and, and, and get uh, get their teammates to follow suit. And then I think that's just we need more out of the junior class. You know, Josh, Tyler, Sid, Isaiah. If we're going to make like a big jump in year two, if, those, if that junior class really rises here with with the seniors and then with the talented newcomers, I think we got a chance. Tip off for that exhibition opener at 7 p.m. on Wednesday at the Excel Center. That's going to do it for this week's edition of Sports Sunday. Shout out to director Kyle Buchanan, our producer Libby Hess, and the whole rest of the crew for helping it all come together. We'll leave you with some of the best highlights from week seven of FNF. Week eight should be another one this Friday. I'm Elliot Polikoff. Happy Monday, y'all.